Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. In the previous tutorial, we added physics into our air hockey game. However, player can still move even beyond the edge of the playing field. In this video, we are going to fix that. In order to restrict the player's movement to a certain area, we need to have some points in the game which are gonna represent the borders of that area in which the player can move. Unity doesn't have such thing as points though, so we will create game objects and put them onto each side of the screen. Then we will use the coordinates of those game objects, or rather the transforms of those game objects, to determine the area where we can move. A screen has four sides, so we need to create four game objects. First, let's create some kind of holder game object, which is gonna have just one purpose, to group all of the boundary game objects together. We are gonna create such holder game object as a child of barrier, which is a child of BG. So we wanna right click barrier, create empty, and we are gonna name this boundary holder. Now we wanna create four game objects, which are going to be children of the just created boundary game object. They will be called up, down, left and right for respective sides of the screen. We will create them just as we created boundary holders, so create empty and name it to up and do similarly with all of the others. Because these game objects are empty, we cannot see them in the scene very clearly. We can change that by adding an icon to them by going up here onto this cube, clicking on it and in this tutorial I'm gonna choose this nice green circle. And we still cannot see them but that's just because here's the camera that's covering them over in the scene view. And obviously we are never gonna see these four points in the game itself, it's just for the Unity Editor scene view. Now we are gonna position these boundary game objects. We have to keep in mind though that these objects are gonna be restricting the movement of the center of the player, not the edges. This means we can't just put these boundaries directly to the edges of the barrier, because the player would still clip through it. We need to put them in a certain distance from the barrier, and that distance is the radius of the player, right here. To move them, just select a game object in the hierarchy and in the upper right corner click on the little four arrows, which is gonna allow us to move them nicely along just one axis. We wanna drag the game object call up to the upper side of the screen and so on. Alrighty, notice that we need to have a bit of space between the barrier and the boundaries because of reasons I've explained earlier. Now in this tutorial we are doing this by hand because, let's be honest here, we do not need the boundaries to be preventing clipping 100% precisely. We just need it to be good enough. However, if you needed the boundaries to be totally precise for whatever reason, it would be quite easy to write a script which would position them based on the radius of the player. This would be actually pretty nice since you could resize the player or add a shop in which you could buy different size pedals and the boundaries would change automatically based on the radius. And if you are interested in creating a virtual currency shop, you can check out my tutorial which should be on the screen right now. By now we've prepared all the ingredients, but now it's time for us to actually start cooking. For those of you who don't get my bad metaphors, this means that we are gonna write some code. Because we are restricting player's movement, it's alright to just add this new code to the already existent player movement script. You should always try to have one script do only one specific thing, because otherwise it will all get really messy real fast. So we are gonna open player movement in our favorite code editor. And let's add some new stuff. We need to store the transform of the boundary holder game object because we will later want to get the children of boundary holder. So we want to create public transform boundary holder. And we can go to the Unity editor and go to player red and drag the boundary holder into this field in this script. We need to keep track of where are the boundary points. 
the easiest way to do this is to create a struct which will group up, down, left and right floating point numbers. To create such struct we are gonna write struct boundary to curly braces and this boundary struct is gonna have four fields. They are gonna be of type float and they are gonna be public. So public float and names of the fields are gonna be obviously up, down, left and right. For ease of use we also wanna create a constructor. So public boundary and it's gonna accept four arguments float up, float down, float left and also float right. And in the body of the constructor we just wanna set the fields of this struct to be equal to these parameters that we've passed into this constructor. So up with uppercase is gonna be equal to up with lowercase and so on. And we wanna create a field which will store the current boundary for the player. So outside this struct, inside this player movement class, we wanna create boundary, player boundary. Now, in the start method, we wanna set the boundary to respective coordinates from the child game objects of the boundary holder and the child game objects are up, down and left and right and all of this stuff. Up and down boundaries will need to remember only the Y coordinate. So up and down needs to remember only Y. And left and right boundaries will store only the X coordinate. So we are gonna write player boundary, which is this field of type boundary. And boundary is the struct that we've created just a while ago. And this player boundary field is gonna be equal to new boundary. And now we want to write boundary holder, which is the transform, which is the parent of all the up, down, left and right boundaries. So boundary holder dot get child. And we want to get the first child. So we want to write index zero, which is the first child, which in our case is the up boundary, as you can see. And we want to get the position of the up boundary and we want to get the Y coordinate. Now we can just copy this and we're gonna paste it in here and we wanna get the first child and we also wanna get the Y coordinate. And again, just paste it in here. Now we wanna get the third child. So we wanna write here two and we wanna get the X coordinate, not Y coordinate because this third parameter that's supplied to the boundary is actually for the left boundary and the left boundary needs to keep track of the X coordinate. And again, paste it in here for the fourth time. We want to get the fourth boundary, which has index of three, not four. And we want to get again the X coordinate because this is the right boundary. All right, so we have the boundaries. We can go to the update method. And now comes the most important part to actually restrict the movement. To make it happen, we will use Unity's clamp method. Its principle is simple. It takes in a number, in our case the mouse position, and also a minimum and a maximum value. Then, if the given number is less than the minimum, the method will return the minimum. Similarly, if the number is more than the maximum, the method will return the maximum. And finally, when the number is in between minimal and maximal values, the method will obviously output the given number itself, which in our case is the actual mouse position. This is gonna enable us to effectively restrict the movement of the player by giving it the maximum and minimum values between which it can operate. So inside this if statement, where we are moving the player, we are gonna create a vector too, and we are gonna call it clamped mouse pass, which is just short for clamped mouse position. And it's gonna be equal to new vector two. And now we wanna supply the X and Y coordinates for this new vector two. The X coordinate is gonna be equal to math F, which is the math struct on which are all of the methods that Unity supplies us with. And we wanna write dot, so access a member here, and clamp and now we want to supply the mouse position which is going to be the value so 
mouse pass and only the x coordinate minimum will be our player boundary dot left because we do not want the player to be able to move beyond this left boundary and the maximum is gonna be player boundary dot right cool and now we want to supply the y coordinate for this new vector too and the new y coordinate is also going to be mathf dot clamp and this time we want to clamp the mouse position dot y and we want to clamp it between player boundary dot down and player boundary dot up all right and now all that's left to do is that we want to move the rigid body to the new clamped mouse position so we want to change this mouse pass to clamped mouse pass and now let's test if everything works so when we launch the game the player should not be able to move beyond the boundaries and as you can see it cannot do that which is completely amazing but as you can see because we've been doing this just by hand there is a bit of gap between the player and the barrier but that's no problem because we can adjust it manually so we cannot do this when the game runs because the positions of the boundaries are resolved in the start method right here and the start method runs only once per game or per scene to be precise so we need to stop the game and now move the left boundary a bit more to the left now let's test again and yeah it's pretty much it's all right we could play with it a bit more and as you can see this upper boundary is completely off but this <laughs> down boundary is completely off as well so after a few adjustments this should be just fine so move the down barrier a bit up and now when we test it for the last time as you can see it's pretty much good to go so this is completely awesome so that's about it for this tutorial in the next part we're gonna add a second player which means that we will create an artificial intelligence you definitely don't want to miss that so subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button if you want to get notified of my new videos including this awesome new video of creating artificial intelligence. I hope you've learned something new from this video and if you did, give this video a like and also share it. If you have any suggestions, questions or anything else to say, please leave a comment. Follow me on social media to know what's going on behind the scenes and see you in the next video.